<laughs> well, this morning, I am going to share with you one of our parables. If you have been joining us for family services over the last couple of months, we are taking a different parable, which is a story that Jesus told, and we're going to have a look at it. We're looking at it to try and figure out what Jesus meant by it. So this morning, we are going to have a look at one called the lost sheep. And if you like sheep jokes, have I got one for you? <laughs> like, who clapped? That was a pity clap. I enjoyed that. No, I liked it. Okay. And if you don't like sheep jokes, that's too bad. Okay, okay, right. Why could the sheep not go swimming at the beach? Why? She forgot her bikini. <laughs> okay, okay. That was a bad one. Okay, here's the next one. Ready? <clears throat> what do you call a pair of sheep playing a musical instrument? What? A tuba. Okay, the children are laughing, so I feel like I'm okay. My target audience has been hit. So that's fine. No more sheep jokes. I'm sorry. The joke is over. That's totally fine. So <laughs> this morning, we're going to have a look at the parable of the lost sheep. And as I explained at the very, very start of our series, looking at the parables, a parable is just a big idea about God's kingdom squished into a little teeny, teeny, tiny story that's easy for us to understand, but it's this huge, big idea that helps us with our faith, that helps us understand God's kingdom, and helps us with our life. So let's have a wee look at the one today. We're looking at the parable of the lost sheep, so if you have a Bible with you, pop that bad boy open. If you don't have one, there are little blue ones in the seat in front of you. Let's not be afraid of opening our Bibles in church it's kind of, you know, expected. So it's just under the seats in front of you if you want to follow along. We're in Luke chapter 15, looking at verses 1 to 7. And this is the parable of the lost sheep. This is the setup, okay? So Jesus, wonderful Jesus, had gained a lot of fame and a lot of notoriety as he went around and he was preaching God and he was preaching wonderful things, he was healing people, he was telling people about God's kingdom. And because of that, lots of people flocked to him to sort of hear like, well, what's this guy actually saying? And in the crowds, there were a mix of people. There were in this particular crowd, the sinners and the tax collectors, the poor, the people that needed Jesus's miracles and needed his help. But also in this crowd, we had some religious leaders. They were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And these guys, they thought they knew everything about God. They thought they knew everything about how to live a godly life. And the cheek of them to argue with Jesus all the time, who actually, you know, was the son of God, is actually quite interesting. So I'm going to play a little Bible version of the story. It's just going to pop up on the screen, and then we're going to have a little look through it, okay? Stories of the Bible, the lost sheep. This is Jesus, who is the son of God and the savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ah, uh, yeah. They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. Hmm. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, hmm, what will he do? Who stay here? Won't he leave the 99 others and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? 
and when he's found it, hey, he will joyfully carry it home. When he gets home, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Oh, everyone, come here, come here. Celebrate with me, because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who returns to God than over 99 others who haven't strayed away. That is one of my favorite parables that Jesus has told, possibly because I was a little bit of a lost sheep in my faith because I didn't become a Christian until I was in my mid-twenties, and I'd spent quite a long time saying that God wasn't real. Um, so I felt a little bit like a lost sheep myself. So whenever I hear this story, it just fills me with so much joy and so much happiness that we have a father who loves us and constantly pursues us. So let's have a look at our story for today. If you've got your Bibles, pop your eyes down to this, or you can look at the screen. So this is our setup, the tax collectors, um, that we've got the poor, we've got the sinners, we've got the hurt and the broken mixing with the Pharisees and the religious leaders. And the Pharisees and the religious leaders, the teachers of the law, they were muttering, or in Belfast terms, slabbering. They were slabbering that this man welcomes sinners and eats with them, because in their culture at the time, it was very unheard of for, um, for people that were considered unclean to spend time with people who were considered holy. And that's why that they were a wee bit of a slabber bunch today. So this is the parable that Jesus told. There was a hundred sheep. One of them goes missing. He leaves the 99 in the open country. He goes after the lost sheep. He finds it. He puts it on his shoulders. He walks back home with it. He calls all his neighbors around. Everybody has a party and life is wonderful. And at the end of the parable, Jesus says, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, which is another word of says, says sorry, than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. And that's our story. That's our small story. Very simple. But let's have a look at some of the big ideas that God has squeezed into this little tiny story for us. On so many levels, it is quite simple. You might even think it's pretty chill, okay? So the shepherd, we know it's probably going to be God in the story. The lost sheep, well, those are sinners, aren't they? Those are, those are the people that don't know who God is. So like, that's pretty chill. That's pretty straightforward. And the other sheep, well, those guys are the saved, aren't they? They're the people who know who God is and are happy and are just sitting in their field, eating their, their, their grass and loving life. So on so many levels, this story, even though it does have a simple meaning, it has an even deeper one on top of that. So that's us finished for today. Thanks very much. Hot dogs are next door. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to pick three little points that I've taken from this story. You have your Bibles in front of you. You know how to read them. Later on, if there's anything that God is speaking to you through your Bibles, that's perfect. But these are just three ideas that I've picked up in my reading this week of this story. Because we know the story is not just about our head knowledge, because if it was, we'd all be okay, because it's a really simple story. It's about our heart understanding of God. It's about our spiritual understanding of his kingdom. So let's have a look at these three ideas. The first thing that struck me was how well God knows us. He knows us so well. I, for one, could not tell the difference between one sheep and two sheep. For me, they're all kind of white and fluffy. Some have like spots on them, some have gray ears, some have black noses. Like, I don't really know my way around a sheep, okay? But in this story, we see that the farmer knows his sheep so well that whenever he was getting them all in and looked over, he knew that one was missing, but he also knew which one was missing. And he knew that he had to go and find the sheep. And if we're taking our story on a slightly different level, well, doesn't this show how much God knows us? How much he knows our sleeping and our getting up, our day-by-day -day life, how well he knows our thoughts, how well he knows all of the hairs on top of our head, even if they are dyed like mine. 
He knows every single detail of our lives and not only knows them, but loves us as well. The Bible tells us that I know my own and my own know me. It's God's heart that all of his own would come back to him. He wants us to go and tell everybody all about his love and his son Jesus so that they can all come back into the, the flock with everyone else. And he wants all of us to be part of that. He wants us to tell people about Jesus too because we were created to be in friendship with God. We were created to walk with him in the garden, to share life with him. And he wants that to happen again. But he knows us all so well. I don't like it when people know me very well because they get to see the real side of me. They get to see me first thing in the morning when I don't have my hair done and my makeup done. They get to see me when um, I'm not my best self whenever my mum says something and I'm like, ah, you know, like every normal person. I am scared to be known, but God knows me. He knows me and that gives me so much comfort. And the next thing that I want to highlight is that God goes after us. I've got a little video to show you now. It's quite funny. So please brace yourselves for the humor and the wonderness of this video. Um, here we go. I'll explain after. I mean, isn't this not just a picture of our own ministry life? <laughs> isn't it just time and time again, God lifts us out of where we have got ourselves stuck. And then two minutes later, we just yep, back in down the line. And sheep are very, very cute, but they are occasionally very dumb. No offense to sheep. They wander, they get lost. If they fall on their backs, they can die. They don't really know how to like find food or find water. They can't drink from running water. It has to be still water. They are very, very silly animals. So they need a shepherd to help them. And that's why God has given us this image of a shepherd to help guide us. Because while sheep are cute, but occasionally dumb, guess who else is cute, but occasionally dumb? it's me. <laughs> and also, it's all of us. We all do things that we know that God says we shouldn't do. We all say no when God says yes. We all sometimes say yes when God says no. But we always need God. We always need his guidance to take us from where we are to where he needs us to be. And the, the most wonderful um, songstress of all time, Taylor Alison Swift, born on December 13th, 1989. She phrased this in her brand new album in one of her songs where she says, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. And so many theological concepts have been squeezed into that tiny little line of song where it basically just says time and time again, the problem is with my faith life, with the issues in my life, nine times out of 10, it's me. And God is our shepherd. He gives us his Bible. He gives us his word. He gives us his people. He gives us his spirit. He gives us his son. And time and time again, the problem is me in my walk with God. But God is not content for us to wander far. He loves us so much because he knows us. He created us that he goes after us. He doesn't just leave us out there. And in this parable, we have this image of the farmer who leaves his 99 sheep and who legs it to find the one, the one who is lost, the one who has wandered. They are always pursued by God. And that gives me so much hope for whenever I mess up, that God will always pursue me. He always wants to be in relationship with us. So all we need to do is stop running, stop diving into the ditches of the life around us and just be found by God who loves us. And we see this image of God as a shepherd way back even in the Old Testament where he says, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. 
God himself is searching for us. He will seek out his sheep and he will rescue them. What a beautiful image we have. What a wonderful God we have. A father who constantly seeks and constantly finds us. And of course, we know that the way that he did that in, an, in, in the most obvious way was by sending his son, Jesus. He sent his son, Jesus, to save the world, to find the lost and to bring them back to himself. And when the shepherd found the sheep, he picked it up um, because apparently sheep, um, they freeze. And whenever they get really scared, they freeze and they can't move. So the shepherd had to pick him up and put him on his shoulders and carry him back home. And I love to think that God would do that for me too. That whenever I feel lost, he will lift me up, physically carry me and take me back to where I need to be. And our final point this morning is that God yells about us. At the end of the story, how many parties and celebrations can you see? Whenever the sheep comes back to the fold, there's lots of them. We find two in the story itself. He says there's a party on heaven when in the parable, the shepherd gathers all of his friends and his family and his community around him to celebrate this amazing news. But then at the end of the parable, we see that there's actually a party in heaven where people in heaven are rejoicing, where the angels and God and everybody up in heaven is celebrating that one person has been brought back home. And I love a good party. I don't know if you know that about me, but I absolutely love to celebrate. I am the life and soul of every party that I go to. And I just love to be celebrating people and to just really encouraging them. And I just love this image that God is celebrating us. He is celebrating the lost returning to him. Um, the other party that I always wonder about, and this is the party that, you know, don't really get much screen time in this story. This party are the 99, the sheep that are already cozy and warm. They've got their wee duvets over their woolen coats. They're eating their lovely little bits of grass. They're giving it as they're doing it. They're relaxed. They're getting a little sheepy massage. They're loving their lives right now. They don't need to worry about going out. What happened whenever this lost little sheep got back? Was there a bit of sheep slabbering going on in this story? <laughs> I love that laugh. I'm taking it. Uh, <laughs> did they give this sheep grief for wandering at the start? Or did they want to celebrate this sheep as well? Did they want to celebrate that their brother, their son, their daughter, their aunt, whatever sheep that was that went missing, came back? And if you are a Christian today, and if you know God, and if you love him, and you just want to be part of his kingdom, and be part of the work that he does here on earth, we're part of this 99. And I feel sometimes that I can be a little bit complacent in that, where I'm not actively seeking the lost and emulating Jesus and trying to do what he does and go and find people that are missing, I feel that I sometimes can be a little bit comfortable in my church and in my faith when I am called to do something about it. So my challenge to you, 99, look at your little fluffy faces. I love to see it. Who could you invite to Alpha? We've heard already that Youth Alpha is starting, but we also have Adult Alpha starting as well, both on Wednesday nights. Who could you invite? Because the way that those lost sheep hear about Jesus is by you telling them. It's not about them just walking in one day and suddenly they're, they hear about him. It's about us, us 99, telling the one to come back and to tell them about Jesus. So if you are from year eight right up until you're, you're older, um, <laughs> right up, you can invite people to Alpha here at Willowfield from this week. So think and prayerfully think about who you can invite. Um, if you are a little bit younger, we don't have a kids Alpha, but what we do have starting is a Bible story, a Bible study called Taco. And it's starting on Tuesday nights for P4 to P7s. Um, it is a bit funny because it came out of the need for discipleship because before Christmas, 17 young people from our community gave their life to the Lord. 
and they made that choice for themselves and they um, are between P4 and P7. So it's great and it's fantastic, but our question is that what do we do with them now? So we're starting a beginner's Bible study for kids between the, um, P4 and P7. So could you come to that? Could you invite your friends to that? It's the basics and hopefully that should help you because the more that we learn, the more that we study God's word, the more that we bring people in. Well, that's how the sheep grow. That's how we grow in our faith. Um, this parable appears in two parts of the Bible, in the one that we looked at today in Luke 15, but also in Matthew 18. And in the context of Matthew 18, it's actually Jesus talking about children um, in that little area, about how um, children are so important in the kingdom of God and how we shouldn't let them wander away. And I feel like in my particular burden here, in my call to children's work, that really struck me. That really hit my heart that God does not want any kids specifically to wander away without knowing him. So for the last couple of weeks, um, what I've asked at kids' church and youth church is some of the boys and girls to write down their names and their age on little bookmarks that Kelsey and Mariana have. And we also have some little hearts. So if you take a bookmark and if you feel burdened to pray for the kids and young people of this church and also of this community, grab a bookmark, grab a name. There's also little heart stickers. So you can use the bookmarks inside your Bibles. You can stick the little heart sticker on your fridge or on your car as a visual reminder for you to pray for our little lost lambs of this community and to just really bless them. So that's our parable for today. I hope that something has jumped out to you, something that would be helpful. Could you please stand with me as I close in prayer and as our worship team come back? Father, we thank you that your heart is for the lost. We thank you that you constantly call those that you know to you, that they know your voice and that you know them so well. God, we just ask you to help us to see them the way that you see them. God, we ask you to help us reach out into this world around us, into our communities, into our schools, into our works, into all of our spheres of influence, Lord, and look out for those people that need to know you, that you're calling back to you. So, Father, help us to be brave in that. Help us to not step away from this call that you've given us. And help us to always seek to help build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.